Is the iPhone 16 the upgrade you've been waiting for, or is your current phone still the better choice? In this video, I'll be comparing the iPhone 16 to the iPhone 15 and working my way through all the older models to help you decide if it's worth the upgrade. Now, real quick, if you have an iPhone 10, 8, or later, you may want to already consider upgrading because your phone didn't get iOS 17 and it won't be getting iOS 18, and that could start to become a problem. For example, Netflix just announced they're going to be ending support for iOS 16, meaning your phone won't be able to receive any new updates, features, or bug fixes. Let's get started with the iPhone 15. Every new feature I mention here will apply to all the other phones as well. The iPhone 15 is only a year old, so if you own one, you probably shouldn't be upgrading. But there's actually a surprising number of differences between the two phones. First, there's some new buttons on the iPhone 16. The ring silence switch is going away and being replaced with the programmable action button, allowing you to choose from a variety of different functions to control instead. On the iPhone 15 Pros last year, a lot of people were using this to launch the camera app. But now you won't need to because there's a brand new camera control button. With just a click, you can launch the camera app, click again to take a photo, or long press to start recording video. And it also recognizes half presses and swipes, letting you access different camera functions like zooming in and out. Now, there's one more feature coming to the camera control later this year called Visual Intelligence. If you press and hold the camera control, it'll launch a new camera interface that lets you take a picture of whatever you want and then learn more about it. There's even separate buttons for doing Google searches and ChatGPT searches. Now, let's talk more about the cameras themselves. The iPhone 16 has a new ultra-wide camera that performs better in low light, has autofocus, and enables macro photography. The new vertical lens layout allows spatial capture for both spatial photos photos and spatial videos. And I get it, a lot of people make fun of this feature right now because who owns a Vision Pro? I don't. But the way I look at it, this feature is all about reliving memories. So having this functionality built into your camera right now allows you to start building up that collection so that if you ever do get a Vision Pro one day in the future, you'll already have a whole bunch of memories to look back on. Not only that, but spatial video captures spatial audio, and having this technology means the iPhone 16 can take advantage of the new audio mix feature. This lets you adjust the way voices and background noises sound in any of your videos. One last camera feature to call out is the next generation photographic styles, which looks to be a super powerful way to adjust the tones and colors of your photos. All of this is of course powered by the new A18 chip, which Apple claims is up to 30% faster than iPhone 15 at CPU related tasks and 40% faster at GPU tasks. Combined with the new thermal substructure, which helps dissipate heat, iPhone 16 can now support hardware accelerated ray tracing, which allows you to play the small library of AAA title video games. The new chip also uses less energy, and combined with physically larger batteries, the battery life in iPhone 16 promises to be one of the longest ever. Now finally, and possibly most importantly, iPhone 16 will support Apple's new suite of artificial intelligence features they call Apple Intelligence. I made a whole video breaking down what Apple Intelligence is, how it works, and what exactly is going on with that ChatGPT integration that you should check out after this video, link down below. Now, unfortunately, none of these features will be available when the iPhone 16 launches on September 20th. Instead, some of these features will be rolling out in beta sometime in October. The rest of the features will be phased out over the course of the next year. So it's a little hard to list this as an iPhone 16 feature when we don't exactly know when we'll have access to all the features. At best, you'll be getting a phone that has a little more future-proofing built into it. Now let's take a look at the iPhone 14. You'll be receiving all the same upgrades as the iPhone 15, plus a few more. And stick around to the end of the video where I'll be comparing the 16 to the 16 Pro to help you decide if that's the better choice. The notch has gone away and is now replaced with Dynamic Island. This houses both the selfie camera and the true depth camera system, which enables Face ID. And of course, you're able to interact with it in a variety of different ways, like app switching and using live activities. Next, the lightning port has been replaced with the much more common USB-C port. Thank you, European Union. The screen has gotten even brighter with a maximum brightness of 2000 nits when you're outside in direct sunlight, and it can go as low as one nit in a dark environment. Finally, iPhone 14 users will be getting an upgrade to the main camera, going from 12 megapixels to a 48 megapixel fusion camera. Apple calls it a fusion camera because they can combine every four pixels into one pixel to create a 12 megapixel image and then fuse it together with a 48 megapixel full resolution image to create a 24 megapixel high resolution image. You got all that? 
The other unique thing they can do with this larger sensor is use only the middle 12 megapixels to create a full resolution 2X telephoto lens. Beyond that, you'll also be getting their next generation portrait mode with focus and depth control, and it now captures focus and depth information even when you're not using the portrait mode camera, so you can turn any of your photos into portraits after you take them. Now, moving on to iPhone 13 owners, there's really not a huge difference between a 13 and 14, but here are a few more features you'll be gaining. First off, there's no more mini iPhone. If you have a 5.4 inch iPhone 13 mini, your smallest screen size option is now the 6.1 inch iPhone 16. However, if you want an even larger display, there's now a 6.7 inch iPhone 16 Plus option. The only difference between an iPhone 16 and 16 Plus is that larger screen and larger battery. Aside from that, you'll be gaining a new action video mode that lets you capture super stable video in a very bumpy or fast paced environment. And then some new safety features like crash detection, roadside assistance via satellite, and emergency SOS via satellite. Next up, the iPhone 12. There's actually even less difference here. The iPhone 13 introduced a smaller size notch compared to the iPhone 12, but that's been replaced by Dynamic Island anyway. The only other big feature that hasn't been mentioned yet if you're coming from an iPhone 12 is the cinematic video mode. It lets you do things like jump between different focus points, and you can even modify this after you film the video. And that's basically it. But the iPhone 12 is a year older than the iPhone 13, so especially if you're starting to lose some of your battery capacity, I think upgrading from an iPhone 12 right now is a good decision. But if you're coming from an iPhone 11, now there starts to be some significant upgrades again. First off, you'll be upgrading to a smartphone with 5G, and that's- 5G, 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 5G. Sorry, I triggered the 5G montage. 5G, 5G, 5G. I won't say it again. You'll also finally have MagSafe and access to that entire accessory ecosystem. In fact, MagSafe charging has gotten even better with the iPhone 16, letting you charge even faster when using a 30 watt adapter. The rest of the notable changes all have to do with the design of the phone. For example, you'll be getting a flat edge design, and with iPhone 16, it's still pretty comfortable to hold thanks to those contoured edges. The glass covering the display is even stronger, so you'll be getting Apple's latest generation ceramic shield. And perhaps most importantly, you'll be going from an LCD display to a Super Retina XDR display. That's Apple talk for OLED. But it now means you'll be able to watch HDR content, and the resolution has increased from 326 pixels per inch to 460. Okay, and finally, the iPhone XR. You'll be going from a single camera lens to two. And as mentioned before, these two camera lenses mimic four different focal lengths, giving you a macro lens, ultra wide lens, wide lens, and 2X optical zoom. On top of that, you'll be getting some new photo features like deep fusion, which is really just more advanced computational photography, making your photos as detailed as possible. You'll also get night mode, which is basically magic. The front facing camera gets an upgrade from seven megapixels to 12 megapixels. There's also improved dust and water resistance now, an ultra wideband chip, which lets your phone be aware of other ultra wideband devices around it. And the last thing I'll mention is you'll be gaining 4K quick take video. Whenever you're in the camera app, you can either tap and hold the shutter button or slide it to the right to start a quick take video. So that's every major new feature coming to the iPhone 16 based on the phone you're upgrading from. But what if you decide to go with the 16 Pro? Here's what you'll be gaining. First off, larger displays and smaller bezels. The iPhone 16 Pro has a 6.3 inch display and the iPhone 16 Pro Max has a 6.9 inch display. These displays also have ProMotion. That's Apple's term for 120 Hertz adaptive refresh rate. Now, this has become a bit of a controversial topic in the tech community. A lot of people give Apple a hard time for not putting 120 Hertz on the non-Pro models, especially with the prices they start at. The other side of this argument though is most people can't see a difference, and that's true at first. If you show someone a 60 Hertz display side by side with a 120 Hertz display, most people can't see a difference. But if they start using that 120 Hertz display every day and get used to it, when you put a 60 Hertz display back in front of them, they almost always say, something's wrong with this display, it's laggy. So if you've never used a 120 Hertz display, you don't know what you don't know, and it's up to you if you want it to stay that way. There is one other benefit to the adaptive refresh rate though. The phone doesn't always use 120 hertz. It can slow down the refresh rate in certain situations to help conserve battery, going as low as one hertz, which is what enables the always on display. Next, if we look at the back of the phone, you'll see it has a third camera lens, and that's the 5X telephoto zoom lens, giving you much better zoom capabilities than what's found on the non-pro models, including a digital zoom up to 25X. 
Also, the ultra-wide lens on the 16 Pros has been upgraded to a 48 megapixel sensor, matching the sensor in the main camera. It also has some advanced video options like 4K at 120 frames per second for some beautiful slow motion. It can record log video for professional color grading. And it can do this because its USB-C port uses USB 3, which is 20 times faster than the USB 2 speeds in the non-pro models. Next, it uses titanium as opposed to aluminum for a more premium and durable design. And just like the 16 and 16 Plus, the only difference between the 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max is that larger display and larger battery. Now there is one more phone you have to consider before upgrading, and I tell you all about it in this video right here. Thank you, European Union. European Union. Union. Thank you, European Union. European Union.